Okay, here we go. Final exam. So why is it important for educators to understand fixed and growth mindset? Well, for me, I look at fixed and growth mindset as a kid having Legos. That's kind of the best way for me to think of it, and it's kind of how it works for me. When I think of fixed mindset, I think of kids getting that plan, just given that packet that says, here's how you go, here's how you will build whatever, the truck, the car, the house, whatever. Your plans, it doesn't change, and if it gets too hard with an effort, the kids are going to stop and put Legos away. That's how I feel fixed mindset is. What you have is what you get, and that's how a lot of kids with a fixed mindset feel. They feel like what whatever they feel they can do is what they can do, and anything besides that, they're not even going to try. That's how some kids are. You can't get mad at them, it's just how they are. Growth mindset. Still have Legos, but we can either use the plan, finish the plan, or we can try something new. Try something we haven't done before and just go with something different. Um... When I think of it, I think of kids trying to do different things. They don't just settle for what they want to know or what they feel they can know. They kind of like to push themselves more. And that's what a lot of more kids nowadays are trying to do. They see the effort and they see what it gives to them and they want to do it. They want to learn more from it regardless of the effort. And they will put in the effort to do that. And that's what I feel fixed and growth mindset is. Like I said, I compare it to Legos. That's the biggest way for me to see it. Fixed, you get the plan. You just use the plan. If it gets too hard to stop. And growth. You can either use the plan, you can expand off the plan, or you can grab a bunch of different packets of Legos and make your own thing. Um, using that with behavior. Behavior has so many different effects with this. It can affect on how a student feels they're able to do something, and if they're capable of it, it can create their own negative or positive situation. Um, fixed mindset. If a kid doesn't think they can do it, it might create that negative behavior where they just might not want to do it, and they feel like they can't do it. So then we focus on more of the growth mindset where it may be challenging, but they'll keep that positive attitude, that positive behavior to keep that going and to keep creating a whole new plan that will go off of their own learning and their own rate of effort and how much effort they want to put in. So that's my idea of fixed and growth mindset and it's used with behavior. So five important aspects that I think are important throughout teaching. One of them is... Teachers don't have to be traditional. That's something that that teacher throughout this whole course has, has said is that traditional, just get rid of it. Try something new. Do something that's out there. Don't be that boring teacher who's always telling you things on how to do things and, and do it this way and, and goes by a set plan. Be your own teacher. That that's that's all I can think of when I think of don't be traditional. Second major important concept is students want to learn. Sometimes you see students that struggle and, and, and old teachers and traditional teachers just see that student as, as they don't want to learn and that's that's not true at all. I mean students are always motivated. You just got to keep them motivated and then in return you'll get that engagement which will equal the end value of success. So motivation plus engagement equals success. That's what I had for my second one. Third important concept, experiences of how we learn. Everybody knows this nowadays. There could be good and bad experiences, but no matter what, we learn from those experiences. And I feel that's an important thing we have to learn as teachers, is that it shouldn't just be lectures, and it shouldn't just be us showing them what to do. We should create an experience for the students to learn by. And with those experiences, students will learn, and students will be motivated and engaged to learn. So it still bounces off the second idea. My fourth important concept. Students' abilities and intelligence vary from one another. No one learns the same way. It's something that ever since I've been in Mayville State and in an education program, everyone keeps telling me this. And in this class, I saw it a bunch too, between the different theorists and, and our different intelligences and our multiple intelligences by different theorists. We can continue to understand this process. Students, they're all going to learn their different ways. It can be body kinetic introverted, extroverted, and all kinds of other things, linguistic. And, and as a teacher, we have to see these different kind of learning abilities and bounce off of them to create each student's individual plan to make them successful. So while viewing each student's different abilities and how they vary, we also have to create a plan that makes these students successful with their different abilities. So that's number four. And number five, my most important concept, but it is number five, I put students can and should have fun when they're learning. Um, that, that's part of not being a traditional teacher. That's part of being a progressive teacher and going off, off to the beginning of the year using Dewey's concepts of, of, of not using that traditional way and even using all the theories we had to do our projects over and just focusing 
on using less traditional ways, but also also using the main important concepts of still having the student learn and keeping it fun. And so those are what I feel are the five important concepts, and they can vary between different areas and they can then vary on different teaching scenarios but that's what i feel are the five most important things for teaching just upon teaching not different scenarios just teaching give me a second let me flip my page of notes so i didn't mess up at all i have how can you what can you implement in your teaching practices to motivate your students so how i said how do i keep my students motivated um Everything we've been taught throughout, throughout using non-traditional ways, group projects and learning, student-based learning, non-traditional schedules. Those are th some things I feel are huge in keeping students motivated. Group projects and student-based learning. That that's huge. Having students be a part of it and have control over what they're learning and how they're learning, and that that bounces past their ex experiences. The so students have those fun and positive experience throughout their their student-based learning and their student-based projects and all of that. They're going to get more out of it, and they're going to have a fun time getting more out of it compared to just doing a lecture all day and, and going through that same schedule of we're doing math we're doing english we're doing we're doing social studies we'll, we'll have recess and stuff like that that's why it feels also a big thing is is kind of not keeping a schedule i mean schedules are important to have but but as a teacher we don't have to just follow that schedule like we can we can bounce around and change it up and, and have moments of breaks to keep the students engaged and not to have them start to doze off and lose what we're trying to teach and just lose them in general with the information the content and any other important aspects we're trying to teach them whether it be behavioral modifications and the right things to do in and out of the school classroom setting the last part we have is is the four sentences of how to focus i'm pretty much going to read these how i wrote them and kind of explain them a little bit more so my first sentence i have is is I now have many resources that I can use to understand students' learnings and, and the different strategies to help different learners and to keep my student to keep my students and learners engaged. That's a sentence that, that, that I kind of learned throughout this course and, and I'll use in my future too, is that, that we don't just have to go by what we know and what we've seen throughout either our personal experiences of teachings, what we've been thought either been taught either through Mayville State or through different trainings. I mean, it's important to use those too. I mean, there's there's more than that out there. Like, we're never going to be taught what we taught, and that's the only thing that's going to work. So always always keep up with, with new ideas and, and using your resources, and never just stop trying to improve yourself, because you can always get better, and that should be the main goal as, as a teacher and also for your students. I mean, always grow, always get better, and always expand what you know and what you're able to do. So that's my first sentence. My second one is... This course helped me to face the fact that I'm not ready for every scenario, but I am ready for the challenges of everyday life as a teacher. That's something huge. We had that one day where we kind of went through different scenarios, and, and you as the teacher kind of gave out some pretty exotic and different things that, that us as students don't really think are the average day scenarios. And so that's something we got to be prepared for. I mean, we can be taught how to maintain different situations and any kind of bizarre and thing but but until we get it we're just not ready and part of that is knowing that i know i'm not ready but i'm ready for the challenge and ready for for whatever else can be brought as the life of a teacher so i thought that was another important thing third one making fun and enjoyable experiences for students makes learning and teaching easier and more fun for both the students and the teachers so that's something i thought was really important too if if you're having fun and you're keeping that motivation and, and you're, you're expressing that motivation through the classroom to your students and everyone else that's going to keep going your students are going to carry that with them and that's something i think is important too is is if, if you were having that mindset of hey everything's going good students are going to learn from that social experience and, and seeing you and others in that classroom setting having fun and, and that'll encourage the other students to have fun and, and be more open to things such as questions and explaining any difficulties and any other negatives that could be happening either through the child's education or just outside of school life i mean you're not just a teacher there too you're their second home so that's something you gotta know too my fourth and last sentence about this course and what i can use for future teaching be the teachers that others will look up to don't just be the teacher that gets by uh, we had that one class we discussed the teachers that we remember and, and the teachers that made the biggest difference for us and, and that kind of that hit me hard as it did other other students too i could tell um 
we all want to be that teacher, that pe- teacher that everyone remembers, that everyone has the memories of, and, and the qualities and and the different characteristics that made them that teacher, that 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 fun teacher, the teacher that kept you motivated and kept you going throughout school. Because everyone knows school year can get long through even a teacher's view, through anyone who's involved through the teaching community, and even the students. It can be a lot. So being that teacher that keeps school fun and keeps school interactive and motivated and keeps the students engaged, that's a huge part of me. And so that's that's what I got for my final exam. That's what I've learned. That's what I want to carry on. And this this semester with, with, with the learning theories and learning all this, I mean, it's some of it's old information, but in a new way. It's so it taught me a lot of new things about what I want to be as a teacher and what I want to use as a teacher and what's all out there. I mean, what's what's there for me to use as a teacher, whether it just be old ideas, new ideas, and, and progressing ideas throughout the classroom. So that's what I got. That's what I learned. Take it, leave it, keep it, do whatever you want with that. I'm out.